Hello everyone, I'm Eric Guido and welcome to Venice in the Kitchen. So it's funny because the first time that we filmed the Venice in the Kitchen, it was my wife's birthday and she wanted that asparagus risotto. Because as I said, in this house, you get what you want on your birthday, I'll make it no matter what it is. Well this time it's my oldest daughter's birthday and for dinner she wanted a pizza party. I'm not insulted. Maybe a little. But she did ask me to make something else. She asked me to make her my famous chocolate chip and peanut butter cookies. Now, I didn't ever give them the name of Eric's famous peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. That was a name it earned from family members, people living around us in our neighborhood, and every school my kids ever went to that were ever given cookies for birthday parties. And so, with that in mind, I thought it would be perfect to share these recipes with you. So, if I had to say that these cookies had a secret ingredient, I would say, honestly, what it is, is salt. But the other secret ingredient also happens to be the quality of your ingredients. You know, I would just say that anytime I make these cookies, I usually go for the same brands, tried and true, but also certain things like a level quality of chocolate if you're making a chocolate chip cookie, or a level of quality of peanut butter if you're making a peanut butter cookie. It really counts, because think about this. You're making a peanut butter cookie. What is the primary flavor? peanut butter. So don't settle for the lower quality ingredients. Always go high quality ingredients. Also, make sure whenever you're making cookies, I chose to make these two cookies at the same time because honestly, it works, mise en place. Having everything set up and ready to go before you start cooking is paramount. Also, the tools. I always weigh out all of my ingredients. Having a scale is extremely important to making good cookies or any kind of baked item. Remember, cooking is an art, baking is a science, so I never screw around with that. Also, I even have my sheet pans already lined with parchment paper, all ready to go. Because anything you can do early on will take away from what you have to do later. Okay, so let's talk about what we have here. We have 255 grams of flour, six grams of baking soda, five grams of salt. We have 170 grams of unsalted butter that has been cubed and brought just to room temperature. We also have 142 grams of sugar, 142 grams of brown sugar. We have 40 grams of peanut oil. You could also use canola oil for this. And I have 284 grams of chunky peanut butter. 75 grams of eggs, which is about an egg and a half, whipped up, and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're going to be assembling this using the creaming method. Now, I said you needed a stand mixer. The reality is you could do this in a mixer with, a, uh, with an actual paddle mixer that you have that you hold by hand. It's just significantly easier to have a stand mixer to do these kinds of preparations, and honestly, they're so... They add so, so much more capability to your tools, your arsenal in the kitchen, having a stand mixer. We're going to now beat the butter. You're really just doing this to spread it around inside of the mixing bowl. Now that the butter has started to spread around, we're going to start adding in our sugars. This is what the creaming method is all about. These sugars are going to combine with the butter, I'm going to turn the speed down just, just a little bit, are now going to combine with the butter. Through this process, they're going to bond. You're going to notice that this mixture is going to get lighter in both cups. We are beating the butter now together with the sugars. This is called the creaming method. I'm going to add my dry ingredients together while this is going on. And I'll put those into a bowl. flour, the baking soda, and the salt. Just give them a little mix. Ideally, I would whisk this, but keep in mind this is going to get very thoroughly mixed together in this bowl. We're going to give this a short pause to then, to then uh, scrape down the sides here. Make sure it's going to be thoroughly mixed together. Also keep in mind that you can double this recipe, you can cut this recipe in half very easily. And 
Look at the start again. Starting to look good. It's definitely lightening up. Bring the speed down a little bit. I'm now going to add my eggs and my vanilla extract. Bring the speed back up just a little bit. Oh, that looks great. Perfect. And now my favorite addition. I'm going to add the peanut butter. Make sure you get every last ounce of this wonderful stuff in there. Always look at the ingredients on your peanut butter that you're buying. You know, the best peanut butter is literally going to have one ingredient. Peanuts. Granted, you can keep on going from there. You can have peanut butter that has some peanut oil added to it to maybe just make it a little creamier. Some people add a little salt, no problem there. Some people add a little sugar. Honestly, if you didn't add sugar, it wouldn't taste quite like the peanut butter that you grew up on. But for me, I just like to go for peanut butter made from peanuts and also the peanut oil. I'm going to just scrape off what's on this spoon. We're going to bring this back up and continue. Start it slow because you have some liquid in there now. And bring it up. I want this mix to be thoroughly combined. Give it about a minute stirring like this. And now our next addition is going to be our flour. Bring this down. Keep in mind, if you weren't using the stand mixer, this process would take a lot more time as well. I'm going to scrape down the sides here. Just make sure we get a really thoroughly combined mixture here. And now I'm going to add in the flour, baking soda, and salt. Try to get as much as you can off of the stirring spoon. This is all good stuff you don't want to lose. Bring this back up. Remember, start slow. The great thing that I had mentioned about my secret ingredient being salt, uh, we're not talking about these recipes having significantly more salt than your average recipe, but I do like to have enough that it actually brings out the flavor of the food, whether it be peanut butter or the chocolate. See, this is coming together nicely. We've got a nice, thick, rich dough forming here. Or really batter. Let's go for about a minute. Now do keep in mind, just for the sake of this video, that I am rushing this process a little more than I normally would. I probably would have let it cream for a little while longer. I probably would have let it stir in with the peanut butter and the oil for a little while longer. But I didn't manage to want to watch me do that. And don't worry, while it might not be the absolute perfect peanut butter cookie I've ever made, it will certainly be a perfect way to express to you how to make them. So you give this one more scrape. Let's make sure all the ingredients that may have caked onto the paddle attachment are off. And also 
from the sides. It smells amazing, I can tell you that. Best part about doing this is that you'll have enough cookies to either feed a large family or to also give out some to friends and make friends for life. There's absolutely nothing like homemade cookies. I feel like it's a lost art in this world. Okay, that's looking good. So if you take a look in here, this dough has really come together now. It looks a lot less like a batter than it does like a dough, which is the reason I keep on calling it a dough. And that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see it coming together just like this, where it is no longer looking like a liquid. It's looking a lot more like a solid now. Again, the reason why a stand mixer really helps this process. All right, we are there. Okay, let's take off our paddle attachment. As you can see, I hardly even need to scrape this down now at this point. Now we're gonna move this into our bowl. We could keep it in this bowl if we wanted to, but I'm gonna be putting this in the refrigerator and just for space reasons, just move, move it to a smaller bowl. Look at that. That is amazing. I'm just bringing it together as you would if you were gonna have a dough that was gonna rise in the refrigerator, but in this case, we're not in the refrigerator, but on a counter, but in this case, we're going to let it basically cool and harden. Let's take off some of this extra. We don't want to lose any of this. This is all good stuff. Of course, unless you have a, uh, a friend or a loved one or child who wants to lick this spoon, which certainly would be fun as well. And I'm just going to take a small piece of plastic wrap and put that over this really just to prevent it from drying out at all. Doesn't have to be tight fitting, just enough to cover the surface. And now I'm moving this right into the refrigerator and it's gonna sit there for a half an hour. Perfect amount of time to get our chocolate chip cookies together. So I'm gonna clean this up really quick, take a really quick break and be right back to you. Okay, so now we're gonna do the chocolate chip cookies while the peanut butter cookies are resting in the fridge. I have my oven preheated to 375. I have all of my ingredients right here. I actually cut my normal recipe in half simply because there's only so many cookies you can have. I would usually make about twice as much. 150 grams of flour, three grams of baking soda, three grams of salt, about 75 grams of white sugar, 70 grams of brown sugar, uh, 227 or about a stick, 227 grams or about a stick of butter that I've melted and then I've allowed to come to room temp, well not room temperature, but basically coming up from being heated. And then I have 20 grams of egg yolks, which is about one jumbo egg yolk. I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then I have a cup of dark chocolate chips. Now this is very important guys, use dark chocolate. I usually will go no lower than 60%. Actually, there are many times I go a little higher than 60%, but in this case, for the all around chocolate chip cookie that someone's gonna love, 60% is like the absolute perfect mix when it comes to the salt and the sugar in this recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my sugars together. I'm going to pour in the butter. Now with this one, you do not need a mixer. You could very easily do this in a mixer. I just find that this is such an easy preparation. The mixer is unnecessary. Stir this together. Now the main reason this butter can't be directly off the stove top hot after being melted is that we are then going to be adding our eggs. I'm going to switch to a whisk. 
our egg yolks. Let's get all the yolk out of there. I don't want to lose any of that good stuff. Our vanilla extract. I also like to add the salt at this time. I look at salt as a wet ingredient, not a dry ingredient. Baking soda and flour will be mixed. Like I said, in a perfect world, we would be sifting this together, whisking this together. I'm gonna do my best here to bring it together just by giving a little flip. Put that in there and continue whisking until you get to the point that it'd be better off to switch to the spoon. Again, a tool that your kids would love to be given to uh, have some fun with during this process. I'm actually surprised that one of my girls did not insist on being part of this uh, video today. Because it always means things covered in cookie dough and chocolate. Bring this together. Now when you see the cookie uh, chocolate chips going into this mixture, you're going to think to yourself, wow, that looks like a huge amount of chips. But the reality is, uh, no one's going to be complaining, trust me. You just want to make sure you get all the flour integrated. Again, this might look smaller than you'd expect. That's because I'm making half my recipe, but this is still going to make uh, about 12 really tasty, good-sized cookies. That's another thing. I always go for a good-sized cookie here. And now the chips. The reality is this is actually going to be a little bit difficult to combine and stir. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect here because you're going to continue to stir this or combine it as you dish it out onto a sheet pan. Now I can't cook these cookies together because the peanut butter cookies cook at a lower temperature. But that's okay because the timing is going to be nearly perfect. These chocolate chip cookies are going to be done just a couple minutes before those peanut butter cookies are ready to come out of the refrigerator. Okay. Important tool to have. I like to use a little ice cream scoop for my cookies. So you always get that perfect amount. Parchment lined sheet pan. Just make sure you get a good, even amount on each one. Don't worry if they look a little ugly when you first put them out. We're going to shape them up nicely. The main, most important thing here is consistency of product and size. You want all your cookies to have a pretty similar amount of chips in them. You want them all to be about the same size, so they all cook at the same time. And so that everybody is happy with the amount of chips that they get. Although I guarantee you people will be arguing over which cookie they get, because some of them come out looking a little better on the top than they might than others. It can be deceiving though, just because a cookie looks like it has a lot of chips on uh, in it from the top doesn't mean that it doesn't have a whole bunch of chips buried deep inside. If you have extra, I mean, you can bake it, or you could also roll these up and you can freeze them and you can uh, treat your family to some frozen chocolate chip cookie dough. You could also make this recipe twice the size or four times the size and you can freeze the dough for uh, probably up to about three months, I would say, as long as it's really tightly wrapped. And uh, then you can just very easily just whip it out, defrost it, and make yourself some cookies anytime you like. We don't even have to do this, uh, this process. But I mean, think about how easy this is, too. You know, granted, it's easier to just, you know, obviously buy the cookies or to uh, get a mix that you're just adding a liquid to and just mixing up. But this is so fast. Now this one probably has a little more chips than it needs, so we're just going to give it a little more extra dough here. If you have clean hands, don't be afraid to touch the cookies, and you shouldn't be doing this if you don't have clean hands in the first place. So space these out nicely. 
see if I can get one or two more cookies out of this mix. Let's see, at least one. And then maybe I'll leave this little extra bit here for my wife to freeze up and give her a treat later on tonight. Beautiful. These are going to cook anywhere between 15 to 17 minutes in that 375 oven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in and I'm going to set the timer for seven minutes. This is for more than one reason. It's not just to check on their doneness. It's also to flip if we had the pans, two pans with the normal size recipe to rotate the two pans. And I'll be right back after I get the door and these cookies are coming closer to getting done. Okay, we're back. Our chocolate chip cookie should be almost ready. Reality is it only actually took about 14 minutes and I'll tell you why. As I mentioned, I usually double up this recipe, but the fact is that since you only have one sheet pan in here instead of two, it actually went to 14 instead of my thoughts of 15 and 17. Do plan 15 and 17 if you're making a batch of 24. But that's also a good reason why it's important to also check on these after that first seven minutes. If we had the two batches in here, we'd be checking to switch the pans around to make sure one's in the bottom and the top cooked evenly. But in this case, checking in at that seven minute mark gave me the ability to see that these were well on their way and only needed another seven minutes finishing up at a total of 14. We're going to put these on a trivet and we are going to set our timer for two minutes to allow the cookies to basically finish cooking on the pan. Once they're finished on this pan, those two minutes are up, we're gonna quickly move them over to some uh, cookie sheets or baking sheets to let them to cool down, basically. We wanna get the cooling process started as quickly as possible once we feel they're done cooking all the way through. So while those two minutes are working, let's go over here and pull out the peanut butter cookie dough that we're gonna start preparing now. So we have this in our refrigerator and it's been in here easily for a half an hour. And like I said, with the other dough, you could very easily freeze part of it. And I think that's actually what I'm gonna do here because especially, you know, these days, everybody's kind of stuck at home. We definitely have neighbors to share with, but um, I think it makes more sense for me to have another batch of these to just whip up like a secret weapon one day when my kids least expect it. So I'm going to dish these out the same way I did the chocolate chip cookies. About 12 to a sheet. They are going to spread. Our chocolate chip cookie should almost be ready to be moved over to that cooling rack. And it's a good thing too because one other thing I want to do before these go in the oven is I actually want to bring that oven temp down to 350. So as where the chocolate chip cookies cook at 375, these peanut butter cookies are going to cook at 350. So that's about half of our recipe there. Okay, I'm going to form them up. We're not quite done with these yet. That's my timer for the other cookies. Let's come on over here for a quick minute. Like I said, I'm going to bring my oven temp down. Sorry. To 350. And then while I move these cookies over, I'm just going to open this door for a quick minute to make sure it's not too hot in there when I put those cookies in. These are ready. And they are perfect. They've risen nicely. They're perfectly browned. They're cooked all the way through. Now, I mean, I wouldn't just eat these right this second because they certainly need to cool down a little bit. I would cool these, if, if you're cooling them 100%, I would say at least, at least an hour, possibly two. But the reality is you might have trouble keeping uh, your hands off of these as well as your kids. Uh, oftentimes I'll find them circling like little vultures uh, around the half hour mark. And at that point, they'll certainly be good enough to take a good bite into. All right, this is perfect. These are gonna cool down now. The oven should be 
coming down to that 350 mark nicely. I'm going to come back over here to the peanut butter cookies now. I'll grab a fork on my way. Classic peanut butter cookies. So I don't put them in the same way that I put in the chocolate chip cookies where they're just in like these little golf shaped ball sizes here. What I actually like to do as uh, something of like a classic preparation for peanut butter cookies. I take a little bit of granulated uh, sugar and then with a fork just press down on them like this to form like a little crisscross pattern. You'll see how much fun this is when these come out. Because they are going to spread. Remember, there is, there is definitely a lot of, uh, of fat here, but do keep in mind it's healthy fat. And while I certainly wouldn't advise anybody to uh, just eat these by the handful, uh, a couple of these will make you very happy. And then sprinkle them with the granulated sugar on top. All right, and then if any of them separated like this too much, I would just put them together a little bit with my hand. So again, we're gonna plan for the full recipe here to cook 15 to 17 minutes in the oven, but I am, again, gonna set that timer for seven minutes because I wanna check these in the middle. If I was making the full batch, I would be not just checking them, but also rotating the pans. So basically one on the bottom to one on the top, vice versa. But now we're going to be doing it to make sure that we're cooking at a good amount of time in the oven. So again, setting that timer for seven minutes. The only thing I'm going to do while this is working is I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to prepare this other batch to be frozen. And so the way I like to do this, and it's funny because while preparing for this episode, uh, my wife was joking around that I should actually do an episode on creating uh, dog biscuits because I also do a very similar preparation uh, for my puppy making completely fresh biscuits out of peanut butter and things. I'm just going to get some plastic wrap. And put this out onto the plastic wrap. Try to get it as close to being one solid ball as possible. Remember, this is still pretty cold, so it's not hard to work with, but that's the whole reason we refrigerated it, because once this warms up to room temperature, it would actually be very difficult to work with. And now I'm just gonna use my hands to form this into a log and try to keep the plastic wrap from getting caught underneath. Okay, so what are we doing here? Well, if we're gonna freeze this into like one gigantic ball, then you'd have to completely defrost it and then you know work your way down to it being at a temperature where you could form cookies up. I'd rather have this all ready to go. So I'm basically making it so that when I'm ready to make the next batch of cookies for everybody, that it is as close as possible. And all I literally would have to do is take this out of the freezer and with a nice sharp chef knife, I could cut it into the exact sizes I want to then make the cookies. Got to roll this over here and take the edges and twist. Just pretend it's a twist tie. If your hands are oily from the, uh, the dough, which is obviously very possible to have happen, then you might want to just wash them so that you have uh, a little more of a grip on this. This is also very uh, similar to the way you would make compound butter, by the way, which is another thing that, uh, another episode, but another thing that is absolutely amazing to make on your own and it's actually much easier than people realize. I'll fold that over. Fold that over. Take a little more 
plastic wrap. It's a great way to freeze cookies. With these uh, sides folded over and the twists done, it's gonna roll it up now. Like so. And you are ready to freeze some cookie dough. This is like having a secret weapon in your freezer. One that will make everybody very happy. I'm just doing this to make sure it's very uniform. So that when the day comes to take this out, it's basically cut, baking sheet, let the frost, right into the oven. You got peanut butter cookies. We're gonna come right back just to finish up those peanut butter cookies in the oven. I'll see you then. Okay, so we are right there at about the 15 minute mark. And as I had thought, we do probably need to pull these a little bit earlier than I expected. But these, at this point, are absolutely perfect. It's exactly what you want to see. A little bit of browning around the edge. And there's a good amount of oil in here, so you don't want them to get too, too well done. Because it'll just keep on cooking here on the tray for another minute or two. Which is exactly what we want. We want it to keep on cooling. So, while those are cooling, let's talk really quick, and this might make you laugh, about what we want to pair with our cookies. Now, granted... I usually am not going to be pairing wine with cookies, but if I had to pair wine with cookies, you could go with all manners of dessert wines, but actually what I think would be perfect with any of these cookies would probably be something like a champagne demi-sec. Something with a little bit of sweetness still in there, and what basically would make it work is the acidity of the champagne, the little bit of sweetness would be a perfect combination. However, for me, if I'm eating cookies, I'm doing it with coffee or tea. And then, of course, you know, the most obvious thing you would pair cookies with. I mean, come on, guys. What kid is going to turn down a glass of milk? So I'm going to basically let these cool for about one more minute. I'm going to move them over to this tray, just like I did with the chocolate chip cookies, and then continue letting them cool for about another hour before allowing my kids to dig in. And at that point, well, you've got peanut butter and chocolate chip cookies that are going to make people go wild. Thank you for joining me. I was really hoping I could also do the oatmeal cookie mix in here, but only so many at a time, right? See you next time. Thank you again.